Hey everyone, welcome in this second video of the UC presentation called The Base of UC. Here we're going to explore the theory of the concept of the undersea soft encounters, which is the base of our action. First of all, I always have been guided by an ethic code. The respect of the well-being and the wild nature of the animals is the best way to get the best encounter. My concept is called the Undersea Soft Encounter and is based on my field experience, which is more than 6,000 underwater close encounter, mainly with orcas. And this field experience is mixed with two theories. The first one is the nonverbal and non-vocal communication from Albert Moravian. And the second one is the proxemic from Edward Hall. First of all, the nonverbal communication from Albert Moravian. He was exploring and studying the human communication and what he found out is that the impact of the speaker is not only the words and the sentences we are using to speak. According to Merabian, 93% of the impact of the speaker is coming from non-verbal communication. So let's enter more in details this 93% of non-verbal communication. First is your appearance, which gives a signal to the person you are speaking with. The second is the place you are speaking, the way you are moving your body, your face mimic, the touch you can provide if the person is close to you, are also giving message to the person you are speaking with. So, according to Merabiant, in human communication, 93% is non-verbal. But what about animals? Let's take an example with an animal we know very well, which is dog. And look at these two pictures. You have a big brown dog and have a big brown dog. The first one is barking, second one is barking. But you don't need to have a PhD in dog behavior to understand that the barking doesn't give the same signal. And in this one, you obviously see that this dog want to play, but the second one gives you a serious warning. And the thing is that the dogs, they don't have a verbal language. So the difference is that 100% of the communication is non-verbal. If you compare with orcas, they also have a body language and a vocal language. But the thing is, like the humans, the orcas, they have a verbal language. The second theory is the proxemic, and it's all about the distance. Close to your body, according to Edward Hall, is the intimate zone. This zone is reserved for intimate interaction with your partner, the mother and the baby. Only the person who are intimate with you can be inside this zone. Outside the intimate zone is the personal zone. Outside the personal zone is the social zone, and the social zone is for the social interaction. There is a border outside the social zone, and outside this border is the public zone. If you go in the subway, for instance, when it's crowded, you're gonna have a lot of people inside your intimate zone. It's gonna be a struggle between your brain and your feeling, because your brain will think these people, they have the right to be in the subway in the same time than you, so it's normal to have these people there. But in the same time, your feeling will tell you different things. You will stay very stiff. You will probably hold on the pole. You will avoid as much as you can the touch with the person close to you. You will never have a look in the eyes of the person close to you. You will look in the eyes of the person on the other side of the wagon. Your heart rate will increase. You are stressing because having a person which is not intimate inside your intimate zone makes you stress. Look at these photos. If you look these people uh, in this field, in this garden, you may think that they are spread out in total random and it's not at all. It is perfectly organized. Separated by the blue lines, you will see group of people in interaction. This group will not interact to each other, but inside the group, inside the yellow ring, you're gonna see the people in social interaction. And inside the pink ring, you're gonna see people in intimate interaction it's all a question of distance. For orcas, it's exactly the same. And we can apply the proxemic theory to the orcas. If you see this uh, drone picture of a group of orcas swimming, you may think that they are spread out in random in a group. 
and it's not because they are in social interaction to each other, except the mother and the juveniles, they are in intimate interaction. Everything has to see with the distance. So according to my work, um, the intimate zone of an orca is from touching up to three, four meters, depending on the size of orcas and depending also the character, the temper of the orcas. Outside is the social zone. And the social zone, according to my experience, is up to 40 meters. There is a border, and outside this border is the public zone. When we want to interact with a group of orcas, our goal is to be invited inside the social zone. And we have a technique to approach this group of orcas with the boat. Each time we try to enter inside the social zone, we create a stimulus, the orca they can feel. And depending on what they feel, depending on the stimulus we are providing, it may be different answers. The first one is, if the stimulus is okay, they can tolerate us inside the social zone. If the stimulus is not okay, they're gonna give an avoidance. The first step is observing. We must know what the orcas are doing before we try to come close to them. We try to understand the orcas. The second step is approach. And for that, we use the UC technique we're gonna see in the next presentation. Third step is interaction. During the interaction, we have also to behave in a way we're gonna tell that about in the next presentation too. And the fourth step is thinking about leaving. Uh, at my experience with orcas in 6,000 encounter, I have stopped only two encounters because the orcas, they always choose to leave first. But with some of the species such as dolphins or young seals, when they trust you, they are more and more playful. This interaction has to be limited in distance and in time. This is why the fourth step is when it's too much, we have to break the interaction to leave the place and go back to the boat. Each interaction can reach five levels. Here is an example of a family of orcas swimming away from the divers at a distance, but they are swimming slowly, they are relaxed, they are not pushed, they just have a look from far and they keep the swim path. This is typical level one with a family. The second video shows also a level one interaction. Um, the boat driver has dropped us pretty close to this big male and is just following the swim path and we could observe this male swimming in front of us. In this video, I was too late uh, to interact, so instead of rushing in orca direction, um, I just swam a little bit away, back to the surface. By doing that, uh, one orca left the, the swim path and came towards me and gave me a click seri. It was obviously interest in social zone. Another level to interaction with a bottlenose dolphin, this was in uh, Guadeloupe Island, a French uh, island in the Caribbean Sea. Uh, the body language is totally different with the bottlenose dolphin, but this guy gave us free time interaction like this before he went away. Same trip, but with pilot whales. We were above and I, I saw this big bull leaving the swim path and coming towards us uh, to check what we were, uh, what we were doing. And I was just with my fro making some throat uh, noise to, to call her to push a little bit aside in order to not stay just above uh, this uh, pilot whale swimming. And that was okay because by doing that, uh, the big bull just took the place again in the pod and went away. So, but it was level two interaction with, with, with the pilot whales. Here you see a large female, which is the matriarch of the group. And this female stay maybe 10, 15 minutes with the group of divers. And she was just coming towards us and made a backflip. And also she was singing in our direction and you could see the, some bubbles getting away from the below hole. And again and again and again uh, for 15 minutes. They don't want just to check what we are. They also want to say something to us. They want to communicate with the divers for reason I ignore so far, but this is the goal of my research, try, trying to understand why they want to communicate with us and what they are saying to us. Again, same situation with, the, with an orca, but it's an old footage from 2003. With a very, very well-known uh, killer whale, 
uh, known to interact very friendly with humans. And that day I was alone in the water and she gave me this show, first staying still face to me, and then clicking in my direction and also whistling and turning around me. And this interaction was almost the full day like this. Uh, I have many, many footage, topside, underwater. And she was just a couple of tens of meters away from the group while the group was eating um, uh, at some distance. And she gave me the best day ever, the best day of my life ever. Back in Guadeloupe with a false orca, this young, uh, this juvenile false orca uh, was swimming away from the group uh, hunting small fish. And he was just swimming uh, under the boat before uh, uh, we, we went in the water. I could see him. He was just making a strange noise in the ultra high frequencies. And he was, for me, obviously trying to say something to us, so it was a level three interaction. And what is funny in this video that uh, you can see uh, one adult leaving the group and try to keep him away from us uh, with, the, with the body. She, this adult was trying to come close to this one and show him where to go. But the juvenile just left the adult and came back to play with us. That was really funny. It took maybe three tries for the adult to keep him away from us. Because of the swim path or for any reason, you can be inside the intimate zone. This is okay for a very short time. In this picture, you can see this big male swimming with a red boy attached to the left flipper. This boy was connected to the net at the bottom. My mission was to swim in the orca direction and to cut this line in order to free the orca. And I didn't have the experience I have now and I didn't know how to come close to this orca. So it took me a while to understand that when I was swimming almost in parallel line, he was more tolerant. This is the day where the UC technique came to me. At the end of the day, when the darkness came, um, we had this situation where I was swimming from quite long distance. Away from him, in the parallel line, he turned back and faced me. That gave me the opportunity to have a quick dive just underneath the belly. So I, I just dive and grab the rope and cut the, the rope. So I was in the intimate zone. That was my first intimate interaction with orcas. And the good thing is that it was a good ending on this story. Uh, the boy was uh, getting away, let's say, a couple of days uh, uh, later. And we have seen this orca still alive a couple of years later. So it was a success and I'm really happy for that. This situation, this is one of the two cases I asked my divers to go back to the boat because this orca uh, was not supposed to give me this path. He was supposed to push the juveniles away from me, but instead he was opening this path and keep me between him and the juveniles. So of course, when I was almost in between him and the juveniles, he gave me a strong pressure and I had to swim backward. And you can see my fins doing like this. I had to swim backward in order to not touch him. After that, he turned back and visited all my divers who were three persons in the water from very close. So I have been rushing in my diver's direction. I asked them back to the boat. Uh, it was something new for me to see this behavior. So we had a meeting in the, in the evening. I have shown this video to other experts, such as Olaf and Tony. We conclude that on that day, this orca, for any reason, was in extreme curiosity, wanted to check us from close, and that was the day. Level four interaction can also occur with young gray seals. They are really funny because they are shy when you first met them, but then they get more and more trustful and they start to play with you and they don't want to leave you. I had an amazing moment with this gray seal, but I realize now that uh, this young gray seal, um, a couple of years later, will be a big bull full of testosterone and the game will not be the same and will probably not end the same. My choice and my advice is to uh, limit the level of interaction to a level three interaction, couple of minutes. Level four interaction is the limit, couple of seconds. But when we are in this situation, it's better to go back to the boat in order to keep the wild animal wild and free in their own habitat and to be safe in the boat. It's a good enough feeling uh, to have a level two, level three, and level four interaction, good enough feeling for a divers to be an unforgettable life experience. The fifth interaction is when the marine mammal wants obviously to keep and to stay inside your intimate zone. All 
all your experience, all your footage, all your pictures of interaction uh, are helpful. You can contribute and become contributors of our Facebook page called UC Orcs Sans Frontières. You can ask for being a UC ambassador and it's going to be a great honor for us to include you in our staff of ambassadors. If you organize some events, seminars, workshops, works about the orca behavior or also the uh, how to come close with orcas, we're going to be uh, really happy to take part of it or any other suggestion you may have. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and thank you for your attention and see you in the next video called Snorkeling with Orcas in Norway. Bye bye.